Captain Farmer will provide an overview of using radar in river navigation based on years of actual use on commercial vessels. Both Captain and Mate Farmer have had extensive navigation training and experience. We have cruised both sail and power boats, but are back to our love of sailing now on a 29-foot Catalina. Radio Detection and Ranging Radar uses microwave energy to determine target range and bearing. Helps you determine where you are, but also shows where other vessels moving targets are located. Useful day or night, rain or shine to detect fixed and moving objects. Very useful tool after you learn its functions, adjustment, interpretation, and limitations. Many radars still use the original pulse transmission and reception technique. The transmit pulse originates in a magnetron and then goes through a transmit receive switch located in the waveguide. The pulse then goes through a rotary joint to the antenna, allowing it to turn. The weak return pulse comes back through the TR switch to the receiver, is decoded and then displayed on the screen. This is an older pulse radar display with a glass CRT tube like early TV sets. A short high power pulse is sent out and then the weak return pulse is detected. This requires the receiver to be turned off during the entire transmit pulse, limiting close in target detection to about 80 feet. The newer spread spectrum digital radars from Lawrence or Simrad are the best I've ever used for river navigation. They have very low power output, a small blind spot, and very good distance resolution. Example spread spectrum color radar with origin offset so you can see more ahead than behind. Radars have a broad vertical beam because of the small size of the antenna vertically. The wider the antenna is, the better its horizontal resolution. This allows separating two targets when they are close together. A narrow beam goes out, reflects from an object, then returns as a much wider, weaker return beam. Distant objects paint much wider and narrow as they get closer. The easiest way to identify a buoy is at a distance where it paints as an arc. Buoys have corner reflectors so you get a good paint regardless of the angle unless the buoy is leaning away from you. At a little over a quarter mile these two buoys arcs overlap but they will get smaller and smaller as we get closer. Here's the same horizontal overlap with buoys at different distances so you can see the overlap easier. Radar shows a bridge behind me 
but not its individual piers, so be very careful in fog. The two small flares near the origin are caused by the stacks on the riverboat. Maintain situational awareness, as a buoy may not paint on every sweep. Radar is the best we have, but it doesn't give us a perfect picture of what's out there, and it can't see around the bend. Adjust your radar carefully in rotation so you can tell when your head flash is pointing right at something you don't want to hit. Leave the rain clutter at zero until you need it to see through weather. Gain and sea clutter adjustments interact with each other. Use the automatic setting if you have one until you're thoroughly familiar with your radar. Try to set the gain at about 75% and adjust the sea clutter for a good picture that can still see buoys. Get someone to show you how. On this radar, pressing both zoom in and zoom out at the same time places a man overboard marker. Learn how your radar works. You should be able to darken the radar display at night to preserve your night vision. Make sure to use a red safety light to view paper charts at night. Most towboats use two radars with one on a shorter and one on a longer range and for redundancy. Practice using your radar during daylight when you can compare what it shows to what you can visually see. Here we can see the forks of the river area with a low flat area, black spot, and a higher area behind that. Here we see a thunderstorm at 209 degrees relative for five miles. Here we use a rain clutter of 51% to reduce the thunderstorm paint so we can see other things. On a six mile range, you can't see the river banks or buoys. Your variable range marker and electronic bearing locator can be used to determine where objects are relative to your boat. With two VRMs and EBLs, you can measure the distance between two objects. Here we're moored at the dock, so the chart on the right is not oriented properly since I don't have a heading indicator. AIS is now a better way to track other vessels on your chart plotter, especially on the river. Use your spotlight to confirm which side you're keeping to at night. Look at free AIS data sources to plan your day. Only tows within range of an internet connected shore receiver can be seen inland until you get close enough to see them on your own AIS. Here I am preparing to pass a tow 
the large blob in the middle of the river. Here I am abreast of the toe on his starboard side with the bridge behind us. Here I am clear ahead in time to miss the can buoy. River passing takes careful planning and watch your radar very carefully. Here's a tow transiting a bridge near our dock as seen on radar. And here's what it looks like visually. This is a type of comparison that helps you learn to use your radar. Thanks for watching this video and enjoy river navigation. Now get on that boat, turn your radar on and use it. It is required to be on if fitted and operational per regulation. Every vessel shall at all times maintain a proper lookout by sight and hearing as well as by all available means. Thanks for watching this video on using radar and river navigation. Radar is a powerful tool, but it takes training and practice to use it effectively. Please like, subscribe, and visit our website.